Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Greg Hogg and welcome back to a three-part series on collecting web data. This video is part two in the series. Last time we talked about proxies and how they're a middleman between you and the internet. If that didn't make sense, you might want to watch the first video and then you can come back to this one, where we talk all about web scraping. We mentioned it briefly in the first video, but now we're really going to cover that in this one. So firstly, what is a web scraper? Well, technically a human could be a web scraper by going onto websites, absorbing the information and maybe copying and pasting, but that's really slow. And we want, as with pretty much everything, an automated approach to collecting information from the web. This is called a web scraper, and you generally write them in a programming language, like JavaScript or Python are very popular, and there's also pre-built tools online we'll talk about as well. Now when we talk about scraping the web, it could be really complex, like taking all the information from Amazon, maybe comparing different prices and finding the best ones, or it could be something really easy, like just going to a news site and getting the most popular headlines. Now, one of the reasons why I love web scraping so much is because it's great for data science. Oftentimes, you can get some really great data on the web to plug into your machine learning models, but you actually have to get that data, and to do it by hand, it can be really annoying. By using proxies as well as great web scrapers, this can be a great tool to make some really cool models. So as I mentioned, Python and JavaScript are two very common languages for building web scrapers. In the video description, I linked an article for each of these languages from Bright Data. When you do web scraping, you're sure to come across a couple tools like Beautiful Soup in Python and a lot of the time Selenium. We need to traverse a given complex website like Amazon. We need to be able to search different computer terms if we're looking for computer items, we need to click different products, maybe look at reviews, we need to traverse the web or this website in a sophisticated, automated way. One of the key pieces of Selenium's technology is that it traverses the web like a human would. It slows things down, it clicks links, it looks around, and this is really, really important because if a website has reason to believe that an automated tool is scraping its site, well, it may get annoyed by that, and so it might block you, or it might limit you and slow you down, and all sorts of issues may come up. That's why Selenium paired with, as we talked about in the first video, a proxy is so essential to do great web scraping. So while Selenium is great at traversing the web and these websites, we also need a great web scraper, which is going to collect and organize the information on these websites. Now, if you've ever built a web page, you'll know that it's made out of three different files. We have JavaScript files, which is for automation, doing various tasks, not super important for web scraping. We have CSS, which is for styling things. That's really not important for web scraping. And we have HTML, which stores the headers, the paragraphs, all the information that's actually making up the content of the website. In addition to traversing these sites, we need something like Beautiful Soup, which is going to collect and organize the HTML tags so that we can put it into like a JSON file or maybe a CSV for our data science tasks. So if you were to look up a blog, and maybe you have for scraping web information, you'll see something like Python and Beautiful Soup and Selenium for crawling and collecting this information. Okay, watching this back, I'm realizing, why don't I just show you how to do it? Because it's actually really easy. Here's a super simple web scraper in Python. Okay, if you've never coded before, just go to Google Colab and then make a new notebook. So I'm just going to call it Python Simple Web Scraper. It's going to be really, really simple. And we just click connect and it goes to Google's resources. So we'll just write our Python code in here. I have it memorized. If you don't, then just look up a blog and that's totally fine. We will import the requests library for doing web requests and we will import beautiful soup. So from BS4, beautiful soup 4, we will import just beautiful soup in capitals like that. Now we get our our URL that we're trying to scrape information from. So if you found the website yourself, you would just kind of go to the top there at the browser, copy that link, and then put it in here. So URL equals that string. So we're going to do https colon slash slash ca dot news dot yahoo dot com slash. So we get Yahoo's front page basically, and we'll get page is equal to requests dot get the URL. So basically go and get that information. Same thing that would happen if you visited the site yourself and then soup we make a soup out of a beautiful 
soup, and then you give it the page.content and the html.parser. Now that creates this object called soup, and I'm just gonna print it back to you. And basically this is just a massive HTML page. So I scrolled up to the top here and you'll see doc type HTML. If you've never seen an HTML page before, well, it starts like that and you have these tags. I'm not gonna show you the whole process on how to actually parse the information from this, but this is all you would do in Python. Now that you have this soup, you can just do clever functions to collect the information that you need. If you wanted to do this in JavaScript instead, it's a very, very similar process. They're similar languages, except JS is actually built for manipulating HTML. So I'm not going to show you that, but it's really easy. Another reminder that this does not use a proxy and it does not use Selenium. It just uses Python and some simple scraping to collect some information. There's a lot more you can do. And in video three, I'll show you some of Bright Data's tools to do some really cool stuff. But anyways, back to the video. Without a proxy and without sophisticated tools, you're very likely to run into some bad issues from these popular websites. So when I want to get web data to use in my machine learning models, I often make use of Bright Data's proxies and tools. They are great at unblocking content so that you can get the information that you deserve. Bright Data, who is also the sponsor of this video, provides state-of-the-art proxies and tools to unblock the content that we deserve from the web. Okay, in video number one, we talked about proxies. In this video, we talked about web scraping. In the next video, we're gonna show how to bring that all together using Bright Data's tools and proxies. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. It's gonna be a good one.